Roadhouse. So, I watched the new Roadhouse reboot starring Conor McGregor, Jake Gyllenhaal, and I don't remember anybody else that was in this movie. And that 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 sounds bad, but like I feel like this movie was meant to be forgettable in every aspect that wasn't named Conor McGregor. I'm going to go through the spoiler-free section of the video, just giving my thoughts on everything on it. This is going to be a one-off movie review. The only reason that I'm even doing this is because, first off, Conor McGregor's made his acting debut, boys, in a movie that I like. I'm going to remind you that Conor's role was supposed to be Ronda Rousey, or she was supposed to play Dalton, which... We'll get to the problems in that, and maybe she might have done a better job than Jake Gyllenhaal did. But, um, yeah, we, we need to talk about this movie. This is a big step in MMA, bigger than Kamara Usman's role in Black Panther 2. Where do I begin with this movie? This, if Conor McGregor was not in this film, this would be a solid 2 to 3 out of 10. It would be. This movie... Reminds me of the movies that you used to watch when you were like seven or eight and you remember them as being like these great movies and then you watch them now and you're like, was I an idiot? Yes, you were. It is one of those types of movies. It feels like an early 2000s action movie in some of the good ways, but some of the bad ways, okay? Admittedly, the early 2000s were filled with some cheesers out there, but the cheesers gave it flavor. And this movie, from start to finish, first off, Jake Gyllenhaal has starred in two movies where he plays a fighter, or a retired fighter. I don't think that's a spoiler, I mean, we all saw him do the weigh-in at the UFC something-something, okay, like, we, we got the whole group on board, we knew he was a former fighter in this movie. Jake Gyllenhaal can't fight. Holy crap, dude. That was one of my biggest nitpicks of this movie. Jake Gyllenhaal, in just about every action scene that he's in, except for maybe one, and we'll get to that, is some of the most unbelievable action I've ever, ever seen. Bro, the first scene of him fighting isn't even him fighting. It's him taking off his boots, fighting, maybe this is a spoiler warning, Post Malone. Yeah, no, Post Malone is in this movie. Also, Proper 12, there, there's a lot of plugs in this movie, and I guarantee you this is how this movie was made, was off the, uh, the sponsorship money. Because the CGI is also kind of iffy, but this is an early 2000s movie. You are going to watch this movie, you are going to be entertained. The cinematography is very iffy. I, like This is actually one of my biggest gripes of the movie, this and some of the fighting scenes. Actually, there's a lot I have a problem with this movie. I'll do a rapid fire. Some of the cinematography for the fighting is just bad. I have no clue. Whoever the cinematographer is for this movie, the person that had to do the background scenes and the per like not the background, the flashback scenes for Dalton, so you figure out why he's like this, and some of the fight scenes for Conor McGregor. Dog, you don't have to film. They got the world star film crew doing this movie. Like, they, they threw in every effect into the fight scenes of this movie. It is borderline aggravating. Until you get to about the final showdown, and then you can finally see what's going on. And then you realize why they did it. And that is because Jake Gyllenhaal cannot fight. Another gripe with this movie. You know what? Let's go into spoilers. Spoilers. Dalton is an ex-UFC fighter that must have some tism, dude. Holy shit. Dalton, I, I feel as though when Jake Gyllenhaal was given the script of this movie, he wanted to take out as many lines as he had to say. And like, I understand what they were trying to do. But I, I also feel like Hollywood doesn't know how to write fighters and they write them as like these stoic or berserker human beings. Most of them are just normal people that just know how to fuck you up. I, I don't think Hollywood realizes that, and they try to make him out to be, like, these next-level human beings. And first off, Jake Gyllenhaal, both in this movie, demonstrates that he doesn't know how to fight, and he's damn near superhuman. Okay, like, this is Jason Bourne, Jake Gyllenhaal. I want to know what fighting style you learn to break somebody's index finger 
just doing that. Like, this was some Steven Seagal-level bullshittery that Jake Gyllenhaal was pulling off. And then every time that he had to do, like, the line delivery, okay? Like, he shows up into this movie, and he's a retired fighter trying to escape his past, but he's going to, like... When he fights the bikers, like, when you first see the bad guys of this movie, he just slaps the shit out of them and takes them to the hospital. It was a pretty funny gimmick. Like, I understand what they were going for with Jake Gyllenhaal. He's a nice dude. He he works at this place called The Roadhouse, and they say it a lot, and they make fun of the name a lot, to the point where it's damn near annoying. And then Jake Gyllenhaal, whenever he has to get down to business, does some of the worst fight choreography I have ever seen. Dude, if you have Conor McGregor on set, could you take any pointers from the man? Like, I'm not kidding. It is It is some of the worst fight choreography I've ever seen. Until Connor shows up. Okay? So when Connor finally shows up, we're about an hour. An hour and 20 minutes into the film. I was socked by the runtime of this movie. This is a two hour movie. When we're 40 minutes in, I'm thinking to myself, is, does, when does Connor show up? I thought Connor was supposed to be like one of the main bad guys. He is. Dog, they, say, they save him till after the midpoint of the movie. I thought I was getting scammed until I realized that this movie, they just refused to really cut anything. Like, you could have cut so much from this movie. Because you got Jake Gyllenhaal, borderline, must have the tip. Like, actually, let me explain why. So, his dark past, you find out, is he, he killed somebody or paralyzed somebody in the octagon. It's left somewhat ambiguous, but like, from what people say in the movie, it's pretty much like, oh yeah, he killed a dude in the octagon. Never mind the fact when they actually sew the footage of it, it is some of the funniest fight choreography I have ever seen. And then, when they sew him actually doing it to his opponent, you know, like laying the ground strikes that eventually kill the dude, it is one of the funniest stoppages. It, like, if this happened in the UFC, like, it's not like a Bobby Green, Jalen Turner finish, okay? It is that but made by, like, a Bollywood movie. It is that cheesy. Bro, the referee pulls him away, and he comes back and lays one more strike on the dude's unconscious body, and then that leads to him wanting to be a pacifist. And then eventually, when the bad guys finally, like, do their bad guy things, okay? And yes, the main bad guy isn't Connor. Connor's kind of seen as, like, the good, f the, f the fighting force, like... The muscle, right? The main bad guy is a guy named fucking Brent. I'm not kidding you. I'm not even going to harp on it because 100% this was meant to be a fun, dumb movie. And yes, no, this is a fun, dumb movie. Conor McGregor made this movie, though. Because every time Conor McGregor is on screen, from his debut on screen to the spoiler... Post-credit scene of this movie, he is the best thing that's on screen. People are making fun of Conor McGregor's acting, saying he's not really acting, this is just how he is. Yes. Conor McGregor is a caricature of a fighter, okay? But he is actually a fighter. And he does it so well that you actually want more scenes of Conor. By the end of the movie, you are done with Jake Gyllenhaal, and you just want more scenes of Connor. And Connor had fun filming this movie, dude. There are scenes in here where he's being dragged underwater by a fucking jet ski, and you can see him smiling at he's being dragged underwater. He's walking around like this the entire time. Also, yeah, there's a lot of Connor butt cheeks in this movie. Like, a lot. Like, the first, see the first part where you see him, it's a solid, like, I would say 30 seconds to 2 minutes. Of just Conor McGregor butt cheeks. And then the final scene is more Conor McGregor butt cheek. Like, it, it's just straight on. Like, and, and people saying, it's like, why they gotta do this to my boy Conor? Conor 100% put this shit in the script. You, you think about the type of person Conor is. Conor 100% put this in the script. Also, I understand why we had to cover up the McGregor or the Notorious thing on him. But, like, looking at the behind the scenes, they literally covered his entire body of, like, no tattoos. And then they just did 
a poorly ripped off version of his tattoos. Dog, they put a battle axe on his back instead of like the spiral cross. Slight nitpick. I, I think his normal tattoos are just as crazy as the ones that you gave him, but the new ones that you gave him just come off as a little bit too try hard. Conor McGregor also saves the fight choreography. And even then, like, some sometimes it's a little... Really? Like, there's a group of bouncers in this movie that are, like, the good bouncers. And they kind of become friends with Dalton, and he trains them a little bit. When I mean by trains them, I mean, like, there is one scene. Not even one scene. There is one segment of one scene where he shows one of the bouncers how to do a step-back right hook. Okay? Uh, no, no. A step-back counter. And then now he's just a great fighter. Until Conor McGregor shows up. I'm not even kidding. Conor McGregor shows up and just beats the dog shit out of everybody. And it is one of the funniest scenes you'll ever see in this movie. Because Conor McGregor's having a fucking blast. He's talking all the shit that you could hear. And then... We just get more and more wild. D Dalton goes from being like a stoic to just being a straight up killer. Like, there's a point where he's, like, framing cops with the murder of one of the thugs. And it's such a... a dip. Okay? And, and it really goes from him being like, okay, was he a former professional fighter? Or was he fucking James Bond? We go from that level. And I understand this is a remake of an 80s movie. And you can tell with all the cheese in this movie. Fast forward a little bit because I'm just going to say it. Just about every scene Jake Gyllenhaal is in is some of the most forgettable j forgettable stuff that you'll ever see in cinema. He has a love interest in this movie. She works at a hospital. She's kind of cool. Her dad's a mob boss also. And the mob boss is connected to Brent. And Brent wants to bulldoze the roadhouse to build a resort on the Twin Keys. So... Yeah, no, that's the that's the plot that you're getting. But Brent has a dad who's in prison who's friends with the mob boss dad guy. Yeah, that, that, that's how it went. And then Dalton has to bring them both down and he gets the girl. Okay. Th that ha that's, all, that's the entirety of Jake Gyllenhaal's entire journey as Dalton. And then Conor McGregor shows up. And then the movie actually gets really good. You get the final few fight scenes of Conor McGregor, again, gets dragged underwater by a jet ski. Swims? I, I, it must have been like a mile. Bro is out at sea, okay? So he's out at sea, and you see in the next scene, he swims to a fucking bridge and climbs that. Conor McGregor's also a superhuman in this movie. Also, Proper 12 is the whiskey that the good guys drink. And Maker's Mark is the bad guy whiskey. Like, I didn't even notice that on the first watch. Yeah, no, I rewatched some of the scenes. They were that funny to me. But Proper 12 also got quite a bit of product placement in this movie, and it's pretty funny. I figured that was going to be the case, but I didn't think he was going to go that far with it. Then the final fight scene. Conor McGregor is fighting Jake Gyllenhaal at the Roadhouse. And it is as good, it is as funny as you think. But the cinematography guy also needs to get fired, okay? You do not know how to film a fight scene. And I think it's because you're trying to hide that Jake Gyllenhaal does not know how to fight. And he's going up against somebody that does. And Conor does his thing. If you've ever seen Conor McGregor, like, in sparring, or Conor McGregor doing, like, a saddle box um, session... That is what the fight scenes look like. Apparently, Conor McGregor actually hit Jake Gyllenhaal, and he was scared of it. Yeah, no, Jake... No, Conor McGregor's going ham in this movie. Like, he is going as hard as he possibly can. You, Like, th there ain't no acting, but he's getting hyped in this movie. He's doing the stud strut everywhere he goes. The way that he walks in this movie is hilarious. Jake Gyllenhaal tries to secure one of the worst rear naked chokes I've ever seen in cinema history. I'm not even kidding you. It is that bad. So bad, in fact, that Conor McGregor actually hits like a, a real escape from a rear naked choke. I thought they were going to Khabib him. I even said that while watching this movie, thinking to myself, are they really about to Khabib Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal is going to be the guy to do it? No, no, no. Jake Gyllenhaal fails the rear naked choke. And Conor McGregor just sanks the dude. 
just straight up stabs the guy. And it is, it, it goes from like being a funny fight scene to, <laughs> like it is a brutal stab in the movie. Like borderline impales Dalton on like a, a like a big old wood stake, like a vampire slaying wood stake, dude. Dalton survives this. And I'm not kidding you, dude. So Conor McGregor leaves Dalton to die because Brent comes out of the shadows talking, like, giving him orders, like, why don't you kill him? He was in the middle of it, Brent. And Conor McGregor pull, does the thing that we all thought he was going to do, goes up to Brent and just snaps his neck Kratos style. Like, like remember Kratos snapping, like, Baldur's neck in the God of War game? That is what happens here walks off and then he grabs another wooden stake to kill Dalton and what proceeds to happen is one of the most brutal and funny scenes of this entire movie Dalton rips the stake out of his intestines and stabs Conor McGregor not once and then he grabs the other stake out of Conor McGregor's hands and stabs him again and then he proceeds to go Wolverine and just stab Conor McGregor 8 to 12 times through his entire chest and neck. And then, scene. Conor McGregor is bloody and dead on the floor of the roadhouse. Or is he? Jake Gyllenhaal does his whole, I'm the hero. He also steals a lot of money and then gives it to the family that he made along the way. The real roadhouse is the friends you made along the way. That's kind of that's kind of the story because the roadhouse gets fucking destroyed. They never they, like that's something that's never talked about. Brent is dead. The roadhouse is destroyed. Jake Gyllenhaal might be one of the worst bouncers ever, and uh, gets the love interest, but he has to leave because he's the hero. This is a western movie. They call this a western three times during the movie because there's one girl that's comic relief and she's kind of good in this movie. I'm not going to bully her. She did pretty good. She, she calls Jake Gyllenhaal's character Dalton like a western cowboy and that's what this movie is. That's what it kind of always meant was. Con then the movie that he stole, I I'm brushing over things because genuinely it is that forgettable, all the Jake Gyllenhaal scenes. So Jake Gyllenhaal stole like $10 million from the bad guys and he gave it to this family whose bookstore got burnt down by the thugs. And I'm thinking to myself, dog, I understand it's a movie, but you can't just gift somebody $10 million that went missing when a dude got murdered. Like, unironically, the dad who has the $10 million is probably a, like in prison if we're really going to go that far it's a movie it's fun i don't know why i'm i'm looking too deep into it but they rebuild the bookstore and jake gyllenhaal instead of staying by the roadhouse leaves goes on the greyhound bus and goes off to his next adventure kisses his love interest to goodbye l leaves his friends behind and that's the end of the movie or is it? Because there's a post credit scene of Conor McGregor walking out of the hospital after getting stabbed 12 times. And he beats up every single person in the hospital. Doctor. Nurse. Receptionist. That's the post credit scene. Conor McGregor survived the fight with Jake Gyllenhaal. Because ain't no man gonna be stabbing Conor McGregor like that. And that's the end of the movie. They, they tease a sequel. In all honesty, I wouldn't hate a sequel to this movie because it is a dumb, fun movie. The movie is a solid 6 to 7 out of 10. If there's no Connor, this is a 2 or a 1. It is that bad. Connor McGregor saves this movie. If you want to make a better movie in the future, this is my suggestion to you. Make a buddy cop movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Connor McGregor. They're apparently friends now. And I'm telling you this right now. If you want to make money, Amazon, do Roadhouse 2. J Conor McGregor is in New York. Jake Gyllenhaal is also in New York defending this pub, right? Or they go to Ireland. They're defending a pub. And they become friends along the way. Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal have to team up to fight the Italian mob or some other bullshit because he's angry about that. That's the plot of the next movie. Throw in a love interest. Conor McGregor's the comedy relief. Throw in a generic pub, Roadhouse 2. 
enemies become friends, some bullshit like that, you will make so much money. Because the biggest problem of this entire movie is some of the scenes don't have Connor. That sounds like a glaze, but I'm being genuinely honest with you. Connor McGregor's the saving grace of this entire movie, and if you haven't seen the movie already, do yourself a favor and watch it. This is my only movie review because Connor McGregor sold this fucking movie. Tell me what you think about the movie in the comment section down below. If you disagree with me, comment section. Adios, guys.